Folks, we're gonna start this episode at basically the end of the project. We've been working really hard to get this sprayer to turn itself off and on automatically at each of these little ditches. This is for erosion purposes. Let's get started. Way too late, Tom. Way too late. This is a pretty level field. So we're, we're not seeing the kind of hills that we have on most of our property, but in this particular uh, ditch or waterway, you can kind of see what we face here from an erosion standpoint. Now, some farms make really big, wide waterways. They, they make them out of Kentucky 31 fescue, um, just go to all kinds of extremes to try to keep their erosion under control. Well, our ground is so poor that if we did that here, we wouldn't have any good soil left. So what approach we use is to try to allow the weeds to grow up right in these ditches during the growing season to keep that erosion at bay. Now we're still calibrating. It's spraying, spraying. It sprayed the whole time right through there. Oh, now it turned off on the right one. Now it's off appropriately. It was better. The right one never went off. Nothing ever went off. Maybe. Maybe Randall didn't drive up that far. I don't know. Folks, this calibration strip is interesting. But let's take you back and see all the other steps we've gone through to get this far. And we're ready to go start. Pushing the start button. Hold on, folks. Oh. Yeah, you haven't seen anything yet. Oh my. Giving your gator a workout. I think we're going to try to farm the barn. For those of you new to the channel, we had a large barn there in that light colored area. We tore it down last year and burned it. Randall's got it leveled up, ready to farm. So we're mapping the exterior boundary of the field now. And then we're going to go through and map some interior boundaries of the places that dad leaves with the sprayer because we try not to spray in the bottoms of the ditches. You put me in this ditch and I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> well, you may want me to go around this next one then. That's kind of a little canyon there. Oh that's my goodness, to, it is. Wanting to cut out of the ditch. That's a place see, that's really hard for him to leave right now. Yeah. That we're gonna, we'll map that one as an interior. This one here is wanting to cut out really bad. We've. put some concrete chunks in it and just can't seem to make it hold. Water causes a lot of issues, doesn't it? It sure does, especially where it's got any speed. Let's see if we can find us a place to cross the ditch. I need to flip the switch here. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh. Your poor gator. Yeah, our poor gator. We don't put it through this kind of paces at home. <laughs> it's getting used now. Oh yeah, this is what it was designed for though. We've got an endless amount of work to do with the backhoe, tearing limbs down around the outside, taking out brush. It's hard to get it all done. I think we've, we put a little air in the tires this morning and I think that may have been a mistake. Oh, really? Yeah, it rode a lot better yesterday. Christy and I have two different properties here in southern Illinois. Uh, this one is an 80-acre property, but the one that you saw the sprayer operating on earlier is a 40-acre property. 
We intended to do the mapping and the spraying on the same property for clarity, but well, like a lot of projects, it didn't work out that way. This property has a lot more hills and ditches and woods, so it's a lot more interesting from the boundary standpoint anyway. I didn't realize this field was this big. Yeah, 80 with the woods out of it. Okay. All right, exterior boundary is done. So now we're gonna stop it. End our outside boundary. Okay. Now, we go find us a ditch. Start around it. Dad drives around every one of these ditches with a sprayer. Oh my. And the idea with doing what we're doing here is hopefully he'll be able to just drive across them and the spray will shut off as it needs to. That'd be That's nice. Yeah, so that he'll be able to get half again as many acres sprayed a day as after he drives over the field twice. These live screen captures were done remotely. I was sitting at the house where they have internet and the gator was transmitting them to me in real time. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a glitch and I missed a little bit here, but still amazing. Let's figure out where that took off to get over to that other spot. that one and go back. When you leave grass in a place for so long, the grass catches the silt from the ditch and then your ditch moves to the outside of the grass. So I guess we need to get in some of these with a moldboard plow and throw the dirt to the outside to put the ditch back in one spot instead of having three ditches. stop. Ditch one's done. Now we're ready for a new ditch two. I'm not exactly sure how to do these little guys down here. But they definitely don't need spraying. I may do these all on one. Let's try that. New ditch three. And we go on to the next one. I wonder, before we forget it, I don't need to go up and do this holler up here. Okay, it may or may not be obvious, so I'm going to go ahead and mention a couple of items here. The grassy areas that you see are areas where Tom did not spray last season. After having a good start last year, the grass is able to get an earlier start in the spring. Now in this case, due to the good angle we've got, you can see that he simply turned the sprayer off for a moment and then back on in two subsequent passes here. He could get away with that because the ditch here is roughly perpendicular to the direction of travel. Okay, we'll do this one and then that next one will be a lot longer. So, here we go. This gives you a good overview of the field. I think you can see the rolling nature of the terrain that we work with. It's not optimal. It's not nearly as high of quality as you might see in other areas. However, we're thankful to have it and we try to take as good a care of it as we can. It won't go down? 
because it's wanting to go back to home, isn't it? Yeah. Here, jump in. We'll chase it. It's going back to the back yeah. corner. Let's go chase it. Yeah. Has it got enough battery to make it? Yeah. Okay. It's holding the mail in it. if we could probably but the reason we're driving them is to have them in the right spot by the GPS. Right. Uh, this is terrible video as far as... <laughs> Sorry guys. You should be riding in here because it's uh, not exactly a comfy ride. I mean the gator's fine, it's just so bumpy. We're going to ditch seven, this will be a big one. Christy and I first bought this property way back in 1998. This large ditch, which comes from the woods on the right, going to our southern property boundary on the left, was all grown up in trees. In fact, this farm was farmed in two separate fields at that point. We knew this ditch carried lots of water and was going to be trouble for us, difficult to deal with. However, removing all these trees and making this one large field that we could farm end to end made the property much easier to farm and actually gave us a few more farmable acres. We have run drainage tile from that woods all the way under that ditch to the southern border, but it's probably not a large enough tile to divert all of that water. Tile in them here. 
yesterday you said your hands got tired, right? You have to drive one-handed and... Yeah, it's a good workout for your left arm and then your right arm gets tired of being in the same place. But I said here, try to hold on to the monitor to keep it from bouncing and flopping around too much. Ah. And it's right here handy for my button. Start and stop button. I think that should be most of them here for the back. Folks, I'm pretty certain you haven't learned a lot about how to use GPS to set up your sprayer, mark your boundaries on your fields, all that this episode. But one thing I hope you have learned is that there's a lot of complexity here. It takes some time. Farming is not trivial. It's not easy. Uh, it's, it's not just get out on a tractor and run. There's a lot of electronics, a lot of software to configure. To me, that makes it kind of a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.